Hi, everyone, and welcome so much. Today, I'm excited to have Victor Odo, coach and spiritual mentor. Victor has helped me personally along my Ascension Awakening path, and I'm really happy to be able to have him here to share some of his wisdom and his insight in his own story in that it might help you as well. So let's get right to it. Hi, Victor. Welcome. Hi. Um, you want to start with, this I think is important, with your story, but like what happened to you when you first started to awaken or become conscious of the things that you're talking about today? Because I think it, some people are further along on this path, but a lot of people are just waking up and they're going, you know, what's happening? And I think this is happening faster and faster with people too right now, like more than even a year ago. It feels like people are waking up uh, more rapidly and without perhaps much background to it, you know, just like, boom, stuff is happening. So I'd love for you to address your own story and, you know, hopes that some people could identify with that. Okay, I will. I do want to preface this by saying that my story is a bit rare and that anything can spring on the awakening. I talk to a lot of people every day and I'm hearing so many different uh, life situations that just sort of thrust people into this whether it be an accident or something just benign. So I'll tell my story, but then beyond that, what's, we want to look out for more are like the after effects of my story, this, the symptoms, which again can be brought on by anything. But I had what is oftentimes uh, classified as a classic kundalini awakening. And that's just where a lot of energy that apparently human beings store within their body just sort of released itself into my body. And along with this energy, this sudden release of energy, which is very visceral and tangible, it's not like you're thinking about it. It's like, I thought I was going to die. It was so strong. Um, comes a lot of these, it was kind of a wild, a wild experience. And I was unaware of what Kundalini was. It just sort of happened to me. Um, and, and again, I, my mind quickly dimmed that down. Like, wow, that was weird. But you know what? It, it wasn't the experience in and of itself, more so what happened after. This energy just kept coming out of left field. I would sometimes, I'd be like plucking a guitar string and like, oh, I would feel the energy wanting to rush through me again. And I, I learned just to lay on the floor and this energy would come through. But again, that's sort of, sort of an extreme case. I'm sort of a, a kind of an intense guy and I kind of brought myself being a little bit too earnest with third eye meditations and, and psychedelics and all that kind of stuff. But Beyond that, what I experienced energy rushes, life up and downs, emotional upheaval, confusion, a lot of bizarre physical symptoms. A lot of that's more common and related. Well, I sh it's sure as common to me. I recognize all of that. So, um, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners today do recognize it to some extent. Um, and it can be rather harrowing, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's not for the faint of heart, this path. And sometimes it feels like you're just, all of a sudden this is upon you and what's happening and how do you deal with it? And it can be very disorienting and very, uh, well, I was going to say disillusioning and disillusioning and real, related to the reality we've known, right? Because that's exactly what's happening. Like our reality is shifting. Things are, things are new. There's in my, in my sense, it's even in like a new normal today. This is what I'm calling it. You know, this is, it's not what used to be anymore. It's, it's what's happening. And <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. So have, what, have, what are you hearing from your people that you're working with mostly on this? Is it similar? It is. You know, I work with people at all stages of the game. I typically like to work with people who are a little further along and more comfortable with the fact that they've been awakening a while and are ready to sort of uh, get, get out of their shell and, and express the, the inner growth they've done. They're, they're wanting to like share that with the world. That's where I typically work with people. Um, but yeah, there certainly does, at least for me, seem to be a new normal <laughs> as far as my waking consciousness and life experience. It's certainly different than it once was. <laughs> that is for sure. I mean, I don't know. You know, it's funny. It's sort of this unusual feeling to me. It's almost like this dichotomy of you're, I'm in the world, things look the same to a large extent, but they sure don't feel the same. You know, in interactions, there's just so many subtleties and nuances that are not 
they're new. They're, it's not this, it doesn't feel like the same life experience anymore. Definitely. I totally agree. I think it's just due to our consciousness changing and shifting and expanding. It's so it sort of is affecting our relationship with everything, you know? Exactly. And that's a good way to put it. I mean, we are expanding from the inside out. And so that's going to have a relationship to everything else in our world. So, yeah. And, you know, I want to say one of the things I love and I've derived so much benefit from out of your videos is you guys, Victor's got a video for just about any ascension symptom that I've ever experienced. And each one is so, so helpful in terms of very practical, a very practical way. And that's something I want to bring to our listeners too, is so much of this process is very esoteric. It's, it's nebulous. It's, it's new, you know, it's, it's this surreal feeling. And yet we have to function in the outside world. We have to have these, this sort of interface, right? Between what we're experiencing and, and how to, uh, still function in a world that's doesn't feel so comfortable in a lot of ways anymore. So um, your videos do a really good job of addressing those points. And uh, I think they sure have helped me a lot. And so I want to thank you for that. And I want to, uh, you know, just let people know that those are available as well as your coaching. It's, um, it's just what we need. You know, it's like these practical steps. Would you want to speak to that a little bit in terms of some of the top things you see happening with people and, and just maybe some fundamentals that they can consider with this? Yes. I like the whole, uh, the, the drive behind my YouTube channel is I want I want something. I, there was, I felt like there was not much information that was helpful to me when I was going through this like the, the craziness many years ago. Um, and I, I always benefited from people on YouTube. So I wanted to make some like a source for people who are through this that quickly have discovered that they can't really talk about this with their friends and family and feel very alone. Mm -hmm. I wanted a source to say, you're not alone. This is actually kind of commonplace, believe it or not. If you, if you look, scan the whole world and here's what I've learned from my experience. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a very difficult thing, it, regardless, but even more difficult when you feel like there's something wrong with you and people are labeling you as this or that, and you just feel so uh, like you're just doing a horrible job at life. Wow, I had this awakening experience and now I'm a mess and I've been a mess for years, but it's, it's, not, it's not like that. It's just, uh, it's, a, it's just the nature of the process. So I'm just hoping to help people feel more comfortable with it, embrace it, not feel alone, and just have a practical uh, means of information that they can utilize when when relevant absolutely and you touched on something that's so uh, i i believe in um fundamental to this process and that is the feeling of feeling isolated and alone and i think physically i know for myself like the dark night like years worth of just everything is turned inward like all the focus all the energy all the experience is in very much an inside job and then and it's hard to relate during this process to a lot of your friends and family, which by the way, that's a whole nother side topic to this. I mean, losing people in your life, um, you know, they don't understand. They think you're crazy. Even if they love you and they are around you, you still can feel so isolated within your own little world of this awakening process. And I know I've experienced that. And uh, I think that's sort of par, par for the course with this. Yeah. I think so too. Um, it's, it's definitely beneficial to sort of withdraw temporarily because there's so much of your own baggage. You could say, if you want to put it that way, that is just sort of flailing up at you and it can just make re um, relating in a practical sense, quite challenging. Um, and then that sort of in and of itself can make you, you already feel alone, but then you literally choose to put yourself in sort of a loner position because it's just too nutty out there for a little while. <laughs> it's just so, you're so sensitive to everything else. And then you're also dealing with your own upheaval and the combination is not deadening um, to some degree, not to freak anybody out, but it's, it's, it's not easy. Um, so hence why I believe why it's just a lot of people find themselves as sort of loners for a time that 
Exactly. And it can, I find that it, it, there's an ebb and flow to it too. Like if you go through it for enough years, you know, there's more intense times and less intense times and, and you still slowly start to get a feel for it and such. But I'm, I feel like just now, like myself and a lot of us are starting to, maybe within even the last six months, starting to step out more in a public way, more connection, more community, more like your uh, Facebook page uh, is, is amazing. Awakening the, oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank. I'm on there all the time. What's it called for the? It's just the awakening group. I don't even know the title to be honest. It's like, I think it's just called the awakening support group or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know the title. <laughs> it's like I'm on there something all the time. Along those lines. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll find that out. We'll put it on there. Um, yes, but this is amazing because it's like, this is a community and it's so valuable and it's so supportive and it's so this is one aspect of this community starting to come together. And I do feel like people are starting to come out and share their gifts and speak up and, and be okay more with who they are. Uh, what do you think about that? I mean, are you seeing that in your world, in your work? Sort of. Yeah. I feel uh, like I'm an example ample of that like for many times for a long time I wanted to talk about this stuff and then I just for some reason got myself out there and usually when we do something we're not the only ones on the planet doing it there's other people I think coming to that I don't know if it's a I would call it confidence because I don't feel like always confident in sharing but just the the desire to express our truth much to bear so we're just doing it and it's just, it's just sort of appearing like you, we're kind of stepping out there the way you said I think it's just uh Again, the, the, like the true essence within us can no longer play the game of conformity. It just has to be unique, has to be ourself. Um, and it's just, it's just, I think we'll see more of that. I think that's kind of fundamentally what's going on is people are becoming in alignment with their true self. And again, that character is no longer satisfying to the point where I'm going to put myself out there, even though I know it might not be perceived as normal or sane, that's the only way I'm going to feel happy. Exactly. And true to yourself, right? I think that's an important thing. Like inauthenticity is less and less acceptable. We, the, the consequences are harder and harder to deal with if we're not true to ourselves with ourselves and outward, you know, that stuff comes back to you tenfold and really quickly. If you're not acting in accordance with what you know is true you know of course these are lessons to each step of the way and, and we they're important so we have these uh, triggers and these steps that we come into but um it's important to to be authentic to what we know to be true and you said something else too about the uh even though it's not comfortable stepping out i think that's really a, an important point to stress because you know i don't there's in this growth process, there's so much that is by its nature uncomfortable because it's a new territory, it's a new land, it's, it's the unknown. And, and that is always uncomfortable for us humans. You know, it's like, that's just, it's that fear of the unknown. And so I think that that's a present part with us, yet the courage is stepping into that regardless and, and showing up more and more and putting ourselves out there. Yeah, I, I think that's the whole thing. Uh, I think, uh, I know for me, I was waiting for the confidence, waiting for the, the right moment, waiting for the plan before I was going to act. And that waiting started to show up kind of as you said, where I think you put it very, very nicely, where the consequences of not being our true self is becoming intensified, the, the, the reactions we get. And it was time for me to do my thing to express my truth again but I was waiting I was gonna wait until I knew more but <laughs> that never came and I found I had just a step out there regardless of how I felt and the faster I went forward the more fear I would experience but once you realize that that's just kind of how it is and you can still function and do your thing in spite of whatever ego stuff flares up at you that's very empowering to not need to feel a certain way to do your thing but to do your thing regardless Exactly. I think it goes hand in hand, you know, the courage, the awakening, the expansion, and that nagging fear, constricted feeling. It's just, 
but you get better at dealing with it. You recognize it quicker. You, you, you have the tools, you have that muscle built more strongly in terms of how to be in that situation and how to deal with your, with, you know, each step of the way on this. And, and I think something else important to remember in all this is the, um, is the self judgment or the self criticism, you know, what's wrong with me? Um, you know, boy, I sounded like a fool, like this audio dyslexia. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but I've experienced this a lot where you're speaking to people and you, you do, you hear the sound, but you cannot decipher the words. It's this bizarre kind of moment out of time feeling where um, I had to ask two or three times sometimes, what did you say? And, and I am a good listener usually, <laughs> it just is happening. So things like that, dealing with the public and dealing with people, man, that can be awkward, you know? And to the need to be gentle with ourselves as we go through the, a lot of these growing pains, I think is essential. Yeah, and unfortunately, it, we're sort of, most of us are conditioned in a sense to beat ourselves up all the time, to have these really ridiculously unrealistic expectations <laughs> of how we should be. Um, we drive ourselves nuts, drive ourselves nuts sometimes. Um, but I just try personally, I just try to, I just allow those, I, I see that now as just conditioned ego thought type stuff. Oh, you're not good. You shouldn't be on YouTube. You shouldn't be doing this interview. Just to ignore that now, personally. Accept his presence. I usually tie it back to some sort of unresolved childhood issue, but we all have so much of it. I'm not going to wait for that to all be resolved again to go. I wish there was an easy way to, well, just don't beat yourself up. Well, good luck. <laughs> I, 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 part of me always beat myself up, but again, I just try to not take counsel from that voice rather live from my heart and then usually that ends up working out well yeah i love that you just said that and talk about practical tips is that's probably maybe the most fundamental most important one is just accepting yourself through this process and loving yourself because and not listening to that critical e ego voice or if you hear it you know thank you for sharing you served me at one point but you know, we're going to do this differently from now on. Whatever it is that, that helps you get past that and recognize that for what it is. And that is not your true expanded essential self. And, and just having that discernment and, and I think fine tuning that discernment more and more as we go along, that's that muscle. It's one of the muscles that makes this navigation an easier process as we continue to step out and, you know, expand ourselves. Um, so I really want people to, to, have per, give themselves permission to be wherever they are on this path, you know, wherever they are, however awkward, however miraculous, it's all part of the same uh, experience. Exactly. And at least for me, I've become better at discerning my true self from my conditioned self. And in the beginning, it can be kind of confusing. You really sometimes, hit these walls where you really don't know what to do. What is the right thing? I don't know. I don't know. But eventually life tends to bring about clarity. And I think people can be pretty safe if they always just literally take action from their hearts, from, the, from, that, the, from that space of their true self. And again, just uh, not take action from that ego as much as possible. And then I think that's the way to sort of, um, just diffuse it where it becomes less and less loud and influential on your actual behavior. Where you're like, no, I'm not that. I'm not going to cower away in fear. I'm going to go forward because I want to. It sounds fun. Yeah, it might hurt, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's another thing you mentioned is I think uh, accepting where you're at is a huge thing that I was always wanting to be further ahead, wanting for it to be all over, wanting things to change. But that wanting drove me nuts. And I, I, I've been in this process for a very long time and I have found peace with it, not because it's gotten easier, because I've accepted it. I've accepted I'm in a place of transformation and healing. That's apparently the theme right now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to embrace it. And that can make anyone have an easier experience if they can somehow make themselves do that regardless. I, I could have done that long ago, but it took me a lot. I'm bullheaded. It took me a long time to figure that out. So that's another good message you mentioned as well. 
Well, yes, and I think uh, that acceptance, it, it, it often helps me because this process, at least for me, and I imagine a lot of others, can become this kind of, it can be so intense and so uh, disorienting sometimes that that becomes the, 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 the very like concentrated awareness, for lack of a better word. It's like, it's overwhelming sometimes, some of the things that we experience as we go through this. And to be able to pull out with a, a higher perspective, maybe a higher altitude view that what you said, to embrace the process, to, to reframe this in terms of, you know, first of all, what's the alternative? You're not going to not do it, right? I mean, seriously, you'll find out soon enough that that's not even possible. <laughs> but, um, and really, you know, you don't want that. You want to keep expanding because once you've once you've gotten a bit of that, ex that knowledge and that feeling of expansion, I mean, you know that's where you're going. Despite the hardships, it's, it's that pull, it's that uh, love in yourself. It's all those beautiful things and aspects of this. So that acceptance of embracing it is so important. And the other thing being that, you know, we're spiritual beings having a human experience in this lifetime and others and from other places. I mean, this, this is a lot, there's a lot more to this than we even have an idea about. So to try to like put it in that context, I think at least helps me understand that this particular journey on this day or this week through this thing is not that huge compared to uh, the big picture. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, this, I found, I don't know if it's just because the energies are different or whatever, but a uh, my thinking can spiral in a negative, like you said, myopic way very quickly now. And I realize how detrimental and unpleasant that is when we focus on a problem. Just And then, like you said, our world closes in. That's all we see. We see our life is, is problem. But like you said, if we could just kind of step back and say, okay, there is an issue, but that's not my whole life. That's not, you say, keeping it in the proper context can be very helpful. And that's what uh, a lot of, I think that's what the only thing I could do at times is just sort of like try to like, okay, it, it, it's okay, you, you know. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it, it takes practice because we're used to dwelling on problems and focusing, but now the ramifications are becoming more obvious. We're seeing them more clearly. Wow this is unpleasant. This doesn't serve me. It certainly doesn't help the problem trying to just obsess about it. Um, so I think we're just going to learn um, how to handle and manage ourselves more efficiently and more pleasantly. Right. It's a lot of trial and error, right? It's still, this is still a relatively new process for a lot of people. And, uh, you know, we can talk about first wave, second wave, like get into like uh, more details on the, on the entire process. But uh, I wanted to say something, you said something really important about focusing and fixing the problem that comes from a mental aspect. That's our mind, right? So that, that in itself, our minds are wonderful, helpful and serve a purpose, but they're so limited compared to what's birthing inside of us, what's really who we are and what's coming out. And to try to figure this out, good luck sometimes, right? I mean, the mind is just, again, it's this little like mechanistic thing that, that wants to get in there for our good and help us, but it doesn't, it's way out of its league in terms of the other things that are coming, you know, coming to be here. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, I think our mind can, is good at solving a lot of problems, but a lot of the problems that pe people who are awakening are faced with are deeper, more, or like core issues that can't really be resolved from the perspective of the mind. And, but again, because it's, we're so used to controlling everything with our mind, it's just what we naturally do, but it, it, it just doesn't work all the time. Like you said, um, it, it can oftentimes block answers. There's other aspects of ourselves that if we relax and open ourselves up, answers can just kind of pop in as if out of nowhere. And they tend to be the right ones, the ones that like light you up. Yes. Aha. You don't get the aha moments usually dwelling and ruminating in the mind, for, at least for these like life personal issues, definitely. Yes. And that, I'm so glad you brought that up. That's another thing that's so important with this. 
the mind versus the heart. And this is one way to look at it, I think. I mean, there's a quote about the longest journey is from here to here, you know, and that's, that's one way to look at this process because really I think we're, we're, we're awakening to our hearts. We're awakening to self-love in order to give more love, in order to be more love. And all that, that all the ramifications that that has, all that that affects. And that, that is a source of inspiration. It's creativity. It's inspiration, which I believe in Latin is in spirito. You know, it's, it's spirit. So there's, that is the juice. That's, that's where we, that's, I think, the, where we're birthing ourselves from, really, is this place of creativity and spirit and, and allowing and being. And that's so not this. This, I feel like, ideally is in service to that other place, right? It's like, and it's learning to, to balance those two pieces in a lot of ways is what is happening right now, I think. It shows up in a lot of different ways, but at its core, it's like learning how to trust which one and what looks like what between each one. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, that's a good way to put it. Like for the longest time, humanity have literally operated only the mind. So it's just, we're so used to it, but this, this thing is birthing with, within us, like our intuition, our heart, our creative passion is becoming more, more noticeable, more intense and more influential. And it's not about the mind is bad. Get rid of it. You shut up your ego. It's about that has its place, but it, it, its place isn't to direct the main things in your life. That usually comes very easily and effortlessly from the heart. And then we might get an inspiration. I want to start a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, the, the mind will have to get involved a little bit, obviously, to learn some things, basic skills. But that initial pulse that might change one's entire life course mm -hmm. comes from here. And as long as we're trying to make ourselves happy and fulfilled from the mind, um, it's, not, uh, it's just not the best way to go about it. It's, it's a, we're like learning how to balance these two and, and use them in, in harmony, not at, so they're not at odds with each other all the time. Right now, there's all this conflict, just the mind and the heart. They're, we haven't learned how to like synergize them, but we're all doing our best. I think that's what we're all in the process of doing right now. We're all gonna, in one way or another, get better at that and then live. Well said, well said. That is exactly my sentiments exactly. And I guess when I, when I call this summit, your uh, Phoenix rising, it's about, in a way it's, it's coming out of the, the old paradigm your, of your old self ashes, so to speak. But, you know, part of us is, is dying, not, not to be dramatic, but I mean, our old thoughts, our old patterns, our old beliefs, our old limitations, our old restrictions, like these things are slowly dissolving away in the midst of all this in a, in a way that allows this greater part of ourself to come forward. So that to me was the Phoenix rising. That to me is the, the, the rebirth or the, yeah, rebirth really of ourselves, right? Cause that, this part hasn't been absent. It's always been there. It's just been so layered and conditioned, right? As a human being coming into this life and like our family or whatever circumstance in society that has kind of crunched us in and, and said, no, you're not this, you're not that great. You can't, be beyond the five sensory, you know, perception, on and on and on. That's this kind of rebirth that I'm talking about. I think that's exactly what's happening. I think, like you said, we have very a lot of layers of conditioned, of conditioning, sort of obscuring this light that's there. It's it's not that our true self is where we're building it. It's already it's always been there. It just it's been so covered up that it's really not almost non-existent and it's like exploding out of us in a sense and it's like pushing everything that's not really in a in this sort of reburdening process you know exactly and that's what i think is happening in a low way yeah yeah exactly exactly and and i mean i suppose you're speaking from your, I mean, your, your own experience, but also the people you work with, your clients that come to coaching and come to you for coaching and uh, posts and whatever. I mean, that's, that to me feels like the, the kind of the underlying message that's happening with everybody.
yeah, that, that seems to be the fundamental uh, cause of all these like tangent type of experiences that are associated with the awakening, I think are, again, are driven by this fundamental Absolutely. And I wanted to ask you before I forget, because I think this is a really important part of this. We spoke earlier about people stepping out regardless of fear and even if they're uncomfortable and the need to express, the need to honor this part that they feel that's coming out inside of them. So this can happen in different ways. It can happen in just speaking to friends and being authentic. It can happen in a myriad of ways, but I want to ask you because I know you you're doing some work with this in terms of people who are awakening uh, stepping out in a business sense or slash just their message their truth who they are and uh, I think this would be great to talk about because I know a lot of people who are doing this I'm doing this myself to a degree so what would you say about that what have you noticed in terms of people you know stepping out in that that format I think a lot of people are like um, at a point in their journey where they know it's time to get on with it. They know it's time to start kind of putzing around and to get out there. And I think a lot of people are like, they're like ready to bust out of the gate, but they're just <laughs> not like, I don't know, you know, it's kind of like that, you know, yeah. but I think pretty soon you're going to see people flying through those gates pretty quickly. And that's going to like, I think pretty in a fast way, make a, a lot of a big splash in the world. Um, once people realize that there's no gate, you can just keep, you can just go right now. The only thing stopping you is yourself and that ain't going anywhere. Or in their own way and not to like tell people to do that, but we'll just start doing that. That's what I would sense because that's what happened to me anyway. And I just, can see a lot of people the way I, people I talk to are where I was a couple of years ago again wanting to ready to but keeping myself back out of like hesitation but I think it's gonna start going anyway and it'd be exciting to see yes it will be it is exciting to see and it and it's exciting because being true to ourselves uh, validation from others who are doing it as well. It's really this wonderful kind of momentum or snowball effect where people, I just feel it in the collective. You know, it's like this kind of uplift, upliftment or support energetically and just sort of a sense that there is something rolling here. And the more you know, more people are doing it. It's like, yeah, I'm not so weird or that's possible. It's just like, I just feel that like uh, building really, really strongly right now. And again, it can be, it can show up in a lot of different ways. Um, but uh, I, I think that that momentum is really picking up speed and the, the aspect of community within this, I think is a really important part to this awakening process because um, I think we're going towards a more communal base, like ideally, you know, support, connection, communication, authentic communication, um, acceptance of each other. And all of this is, seems to be coming online and needs to come online more and more with, between people. And it's building this. And we see it in little ways starting to pop up, or at least I do, more like grassroots things happening in the midst of a lot of chaos right now. You know? What do you think? Have you, have you noticed that? Does that resonate with you at all? It does. I see it. I... I see that generally is happening. And like you said, I think a lot of stuff is being kicked to the surface, like things that would get in the way of that, like are, are bickering. There's a lot of like, a lot of bickering and my way versus your way. I'm better. I'm right. You're wrong. And I think that's sort of accelerating temporarily. So people can see, well, this is not the way to go about that. We need to really band together and accept that my ideas about life are going to be different than yours and his and whatnot. Um, but that's okay because there's a common bond of other in this acceptance. There's unity in acceptance. And I think right now things are a little nutty to show people the universe is trying to bring people together, but we still have this conditioned way of relating with everybody of trying to like conform everyone to our own ideology. And that, that can be obviously uh, that's just not going to work. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> but I think, I think on like an energetic level, like you said, brewing <laughs> the, the best way to put it, but it might seem messy to some people, but I see that as progress. I see an acceleration of a problem. I see that as a out to be right and that it's like divine chaos right that's one way that i see it it's like we're really in this divine chaos right now and for all that we've talked about today all these pieces all this shift all this movement all this like disorientation you know i keep using that because that's what i have felt like a lot whether it's my physical body and literally the way i move or walk i feel off sometimes or my thinking or whatever it might be uh, and I've spoken to a lot of friends who are in this process who feel the same like disorientation. So that's that kind of chaotic, like we haven't quite landed on the the new tierra yet, right? The new land, the new world, or yeah, it's, it is a new world. It's a new reality for sure that we are creating and stepping into. So right now though, it's like, um, you know, it's like the dark has to come up and be diffused and be dispersed to create room for the light and, and the light's so much stronger than dark always. So I have no doubt about where this is going, but it's just this process right now where things are disheveled and uh, yeah, it's like this m muddy water in our face somehow. I could guess I could come up with a few analogies, but I think you know what I mean. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly, I think what's happening. It's, it's a reorientation process of that phoenix, that, that true self within us. It's, it's almost like waking up inside of us and saying, I'm taking, I'm taking the reins here, buddy. But it's like, we're not used to, we, we're, we have these patterns that are out of alignment with our true self's way of going and, and, that, and, and relating with life. Um, and that's just a microcosm for what's going on in the whole planet, I think. It, 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 the whole, everything, everything about this life is sort of having that fundamental shift happen. Consciousness waking up to itself and all the conditioning is like in disarray because it's, it's just, uh, there's a dichotomy now, you know? Yes. Um, but in that people have a choice to, to look at the options and say, what feels better? What's okay. It feels better to, to accept you than to have to always battle with what your mind you know our, our belief system so that's okay this is nice it's just a process of going in the direction of what feels lighter and better and more pleasant and just avoiding modes of action and activity behavior and thoughts and whatnot that don't feel pleasant um but yeah that's uh that's certainly what's going on now there's just crazy transformation going on just as you described i would i can see that too in my life and, and as well as out there as well yeah, good. Well, I think so. I've talked to other people, same. I mean, it just, it's just, excuse me, it's interesting. Uh, not that I need validation, but it's, again, that's part of that connection and that community. I've heard a lot of people describe it like that, and you as well just now. And you said something really important with that, with, um, oh my gosh, what was it with the, uh, oh my gosh, I forgot what it was with the, I guess it'll come back to me. It was a point in that though, um, that was really important. Um, I think it was, I just dropped out. Here's the other thing in all authenticity, Victor, this is what's happening. My brain right now, I am experiencing something where I don't have much of a memory for the past or the future. In the now, I am like more and more clearly here right now but it feels like my hard drive has been wiped and it hasn't yet been re or uploaded again. And, and this is something that's, that's happened really strongly the last few months. And I'm like, okay, how am I going to do this then? I mean, my goodness, talk about trying to interface with the world. I feel like I have felt like such a, I, not a freak in a bad way. I love myself. It's not a judgment, but it's just like, what is going on here? Have you, if you heard about this or any thoughts on that? Um, I experienced that quite a bit a while, a, a, quite more, uh, more soon after my awakening. I was a personal trainer at the time I, I had, when I had that Kundalini awakening. And I would have to re uh, relate and interact with people and be very like on and social. And there were days where I felt like I was on. I was like, I was articulate 
and fluid and, and clear. But other days it was like, uh, just drawing blanks. I felt like I couldn't think straight, very like muddled thinking. And um, so, yeah, I, I think that a lot of people I talk to have that happen. Um, but I think it's just another product of the disorientation and it's just, we're all in a state of transition. We're not there yet so we have our good days and our bad days our clear days and our confusing days but they all have they all serve a purpose and whatnot so yeah good i'm happy to hear you say that i'm not the only one. <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> no i know i'm not i just have to laugh at it sometimes and i think that's important too to have some levity and a sense of humor because you know a lot of this can feel like but it doesn't have to be we can we can laugh and you know have that, that higher perspective on the whole situation too. I think that that's something, a practical tip that we can take away is just to, you know, go easy with ourselves in the whole process. Yeah, just to kind of like acknowledge like, dude, you're in a process, it's a big process at that. And sometimes you're not gonna do your best, you know, it is what it is, but we can be like, oh no, you know, we could really, like you said, judge ourselves harshly, but why? It doesn't make any sense to me. I do it myself. I'm not saying I'm the only person who's learned not to do that. I judge myself all the time, but I'm starting to see it as really illogical. Yeah, and self-defeating and limiting, and it doesn't feel good. So, you know, yeah. Well, we're almost at the, we're almost at the end of our time. Oh, sorry. Uh, we have a little lag and I didn't hear you. Um, we're almost at the end of the, the interview here. I just, I would like to ask you, is there any kind of point or points that you want to end it with? Any kind of, uh, I know you've got a gift to offer too, and you can explain a little bit about that, but just anything that comes up for you? Yeah. Yes. I would just like to say, um, if I could have given my younger self one piece of advice, it would to be just to accept where you're at right now. Accept that it's a transition. Just kind of like we were saying, to just try to, a lot of times, it's not what we're going through, it's not the process, it's not anything that creates a bad day, it's just our relationship with it as, and sort of a longing to be somewhere else. I say if you can just get cool with the idea that you're going through transition no one knows how long it's going to take and it has its really awesome days and it's bad days and everything in between but that doesn't mean that again just i've learned the resistance of that process is creates more stress in the process itself just to embrace it you're everyone's where they need to be everyone is guided from within in the exact way they need to be guided and there's never anything you, there's never any real urgency for anything, even though you might feel that all the time. Everything's fine. It always is. And as you go forward, you'll be able to look back and say, oh yeah, I was fine there, even though I was freaking out. It's always all good. Um, but yeah, I have a, a, a little gift. It's an ebook I wrote. I give it to all my YouTube subscribers for free. It's just five different basic lifestyle adjustments, like your diet and whatnot, um, that can help awakening symptoms which can be kind of severe for some people um just general advice real actionable practical advice that again can help you not feel so all over the place physically i think that's perfect because like like we said earlier it can be a rather nebulous and esoteric process a lot of this a lot of unknown so to have these like points and nuts and bolts to follow these practical points to me that uh that's a that's a huge thing and a very important thing just to have like sort of guideposts to work with you know and what to do so i'm sure that will be well received and i appreciate you offering that to us um yeah i feel like uh, we could go on and on and on with this conversation <laughs> but i think uh <laughs> i think this covers some good a basic foundation today and i hope that everybody you've gotten um some benefit out of it i'm sure that you will and um, Victor, I just want to thank you so much for the work that you do and for you showing up. And uh, I appreciate you being here with us today. Thank you. It was a wonderful person. And I enjoyed the whole process. And if it can help people, that's awesome as well. So I'm good. And I, I appreciate the uh, invitation.
Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, everyone. Well, another great interview. I hope this helps. Have a good day and we'll see you soon. Bye, everybody. Thank you.